Hello, everyone. My name is Patrick Johnson, and I am the Military Adaptive Sports Site Coordinator here at Walter Reed Hospital. And we're excited today to uh, continue on with some of our virtual learning and virtual coaching. Today, we're in our three-day virtual clinic for track and field, and we are very happy to have Coach Rodney Carson and Coach Gil Wheeler, um, who are going to be presenting today. And so uh, these gentlemen are very highly accredited track and field coaches. I won't go through all their credentials. I'll actually ask them to share just a tiny bit about their experience with sports and adaptive sports. And I think we'll all be very excited to learn some stuff today. As we're going through the uh, workshop, feel free at any time if you do need to leave, just uh, go ahead and log off and it will be recorded. Everything from this day as well as the next two virtual days will be on the Warrior Care website. Once again, the Warrior Care website, just go under Track and Field Clinic and you'll be able to find all the material and study the quiz, do all the fun stuff. So I see some folks from all over the country there. I see Quails there in Georgia. Amber, you're um, somewhere, I think she's on the space shuttle somewhere, I think. Uh, where are you located, Amber? Oh, her, her sound's not on? That's okay. So I'm going to say that she's in, um, I don't know, we'll make up. Okay, Amber's in Fort Benning. Okay, awesome, great. Uh, Hi, right, Captain Schaefer. I see you on there, buddy. Um, good to see you. And uh, I see also Eric is here from our Walter Reed. So we have a, a in Poseidon Athletics. Oh, I like I like that one. That's my favorite uh, screen name for the day. So I'm going to stop talking because, as you guys know, I can talk for days. And I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Coach uh, Rodney and Coach Gill, and we'll get started with track and field. It will be about an hour for this presentation uh, today, so we'll see you on the end of the track. Coach Rodney. Good to go. Good morning. Uh, my name is Coach Rodney Carson. Uh, I'm out here in Sacramento, California. I guess for some of you, actually, good afternoon. Uh, I'm the track coach. Uh, I've been the track coach for Team Army, head track coach, Team Army, about seven years, and then recently went to Team Marine Corps as the uh, ultimate warrior uh, athlete coach and also coach manager. Uh, had the honor, privilege coaching twice at the uh, Invictus Games as a Team USA coach for track as well. Um, here in Sacramento, pretty much from my own fitness uh, uh, boot camp and doing that for 20 plus years. Uh, race director for uh, big events like the Mud Run. Um, also, I'm a coach uh, presently at UFC gym uh, here in Sacramento. Uh, as a track athlete and uh, sprinter, um, been doing that since junior high school. And in fact, you'll meet my fellow coach, uh, Coach Gil Wheeler. We go way back uh, to junior high school. Uh, high school, we ran together, uh, both competed at the collegiate level as well. And uh, just have a real passion for it um, and love to, you know, share the knowledge of, uh, you know, track and field and also being a former decathlete. So I'm pretty verse in most of the uh, track and field uh, uh, events. Um, that's pretty much uh, on me, and then I guess I'll turn it over to Coach uh, Gil Wheeler. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, Coach Carson. Um, like Coach Carson, my name is Gil Wheeler, and I've known Coach Carson uh, for a better part of almost 45 years. So um, Don't we, we, yeah, right. Um, <laughs> It was one thing that everyone should understand about Coach Carson and I, we love the sport of track and field. Uh, we love everything about it. Uh, we were ad just adamant and almost religious as far as participants. And now we've transitioned into uh, the teaching and education aspect of it. And um, as for myself, um, Coach Carson brought me on as an assistant in 2017 uh, with Army Track and Field. Uh, to assist him out at um, Fort Bliss. And then in 2018, Coach Carson had a commitment uh, with uh, some with a graduation, and therefore I, he elevated me to the head coach of uh, our team Army for the 2018 Warrior Games. Um, my experience uh, collegiately, level, division level one um, at the UTEP Miners, ran the track and field there, and... Um, I also have a United States Track and Field Level 1 certification, working on Level 2 actually at this time. And um, my international experience is I parlayed my track experience and joined in a different sport, and that was with the United States bobsled team 
Um, and at that time, they had figured out that well, as far as their push athletes, they needed athletes that could drive fast, uh, you know, as far as the drive phase. So they were recruiting heavily with uh, track and field and football. And so I participated at the World Junior Championships as a pilot driver and also at the World Championships as a push athlete. Um, it was my international competition experience. And um, like I said, uh, we are do more than excited and participating in this uh, virtual conference and look forward to working with all of you in the future. Outstanding. Right. Wonderful. Well, we're going to get started. I, I think we're going to do two parts today. And so everybody knows we're just kind of going with the flow. So if we get to, you know, a point where you have a question and we we get off on something, by all means, we'll go into that and we'll just um, get covered as much as we can. Uh, there, there will be two quizzes that will be made available. I'll email them out to everyone. They'll also be on your Teams app. Well, that'll just help you with memorizing some of the information and just kind of knowing some of the important points. And so the coaches may uh, pop in some of those quiz questions throughout the session. So I think we're going to start off uh, with our track uh, section for the first half hour, and then we'll go into our field for the second. Okay, good to go. So we'll talk a little bit about uh, the sport of track, and Coach Gill will assist me on this as well. Um, we'll start off with uh, like a safety brief. When Coach Gill and I do uh, track camps, trials, train-up camps, even games, we always talk about uh, safety being priority number one. So whenever you're on a track uh, working out, uh, there is track etiquette, okay, uh, especially at the Warrior Games where we have wheelchair uh, racer athletes. Uh, as far as track etiquette goes, uh, uh, one thing we uh, mentioned to all the uh, athletes, uh, always try to keep lanes one and two open uh, for those wheelchair athletes. Uh, the magic word is yell track. Anybody can yell that. That means basically if someone yells that, head on a swivel, look to your right, left, front, back, nowhere to move. Don't just move uh, because uh, we've done this long enough. And even at the uh, pr professional level, uh, we've seen uh, some really bad uh, mishaps. And we just want to make sure when you're on that track and the field, especially the field, because you have throwing implements there, uh, you need to be aware of your surroundings. Um, so uh, again, when you're on the track, if someone yells track, uh, you know, look around before you move and try to keep lanes one and two uh, open. Um, one thing I mentioned uh, before also, uh, Coach Johnson can uh, relate to this being former Navy, a FOD walk foreign object debris walk. So whether you're working out, especially now, I know here in Sacramento, uh, all the uh, tracks are locked down, even the ones that are usually open for the public, high school, junior college, they're all locked down. So if you go uh, to a park, um, or if you do have access to like an artificial turf, soccer field, football field, uh, even though it may look level, you might want to go out there and, look, and do a foreign object debris walk, you know, make sure there's uh, not anything, you know, uh, out there on that field or even a grassy uh, field because you might notice, okay, they've got a sprinkler head sticking up or even a clump of grass because we all know, uh, you know, I, if you have kids, uh, a freaking uh, Lego block will bring a grown man down. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it could same thing could happen out in the street as far as, you know, uh, stepping on a rock, doing certain drills, lateral drills. You can step on a rock and slide, and then the next thing you know, you roll your ankle. You don't want that because any athlete knows uh, once you get hurt, you can't train. Um, Gil, Coach Gill will talk about a little bit more about field as far as safety. But, yeah, as far as track, again, try to keep lanes one and two open. Uh, we tell all, all the athletes, hey, if you see it, runners coming in hot, whether they're running or wheelchair athletes, just yell track, okay? Uh, and you're going to see that at your local tracks too, Uh you know, be respectful of the uh, track teams that may be out there or the athletes, again, that are using the inside lane. So I'll let Coach Gill talk about safety as far as sector lines, uh, you know, when you go to a, a field event, uh, meaning shot put and disc, uh, where you don't want to cross those lines. Okay. Hey, thanks, Coach Carson. Uh, I just want to also just add on to what Coach Carson was talking about, track etiquette. And simply is that when you are either working out or especially if you're at a competition, there's actually no reason why you should be in lanes one through three. Uh, the only time that you should be in those lanes 
is if you are actually doing your circuit, you are actually running or training. Uh, once you finish, say, for instance, if you were running 100 or 200 and you finish that particular segment of your workout, you should immediately move to uh, the outer lanes during recovery. To do so is like, I don't know if you've been to the gym and you've seen someone on a piece of equipment and they finish a set and then they're just sitting there. Okay, they just need to get off the machine or off the whatever apparatus so that someone else could move in and, you know, like, hey, can I work in with you? It's the equivalent of that um, because uh, Coach Carson and I have realized that lane three is probably the best lane for the wheelchair athletes. It's not as tight. Um, and that gives them a free, that gives them an unencumbered lane all around the track. Their workouts tend to be use the entire track uh, while they're working out. So for the uh, running athletes, the standing athletes, lanes one and two are generally used when they're participating in that segment of the workout. Afterwards, then they're to move to lanes at minimum four, five, and six on the outside lanes. So when you say track, all you have to do is look over your left shoulder and you can see the oncoming traffic. Now in field, the, the, the equivalent of track is, of course, you may have heard this, is heads up. Um, track, you can get injured by someone running into you. Coach Carson and I have witnessed, and you can probably pull this on YouTube, is where people have walked onto the track unknowingly and traffic coming. And you... You will literally, it's like being hit by a car and you can actually suffer a significant injury um, just by two bodies colliding. You have to remember that while you're running, even with these warrior athletes, they'll be traveling excess of 12 to 15 miles per hour. You take that plus their body weight and the physics alone, you can see that the collision could be devastating. With and field, it's absolutely uh, we, it's absolutely important that all athletes recognize, realize, and respect the competitive and training sectors. And what the sectors are, are is the area laid out that the implements will be traveling during training or competition. So when you when we're at a training event or specifically, more importantly, at a competition, um, that is a hot zone. And mm -hmm. athletes sometimes want to work out or warm up on the grass. And that is absolutely a nightmare and an accident waiting to happen because I have seen a discus. I have seen a shot put. And Coach Carson and I have witnessed a javelin actually, um, um, you know, strike another athlete because they weren't paying attention. So on tra in track and field, the warning word is track. And in the field, the warning word would be heads up. But before implements, before training starts or implements are thrown, there's usually given an all clear. Uh, we're starting to throw now. Everyone understands. Um, if I'm with the field athletes, I usually tell Coach Carson, and we've actually and we've had other uh, field coaches communicate with this. We're starting to train now, and that's when we communicate to the running athletes that by all uh, that absolutely there should be no transversing or uh, meandering or traveling into the field training or competition sectors. Yep. Uh, I'm going to add to that really quick too. So as far as sectors, uh, those are usually outlined with uh, delineators, the orange poles where they have uh, like the yellow, like crime scene type, type thing, uh, or they'll have flagging. Uh, that type of thing. Another important thing, in the, especially in the discus, some of the uh, safety barriers, uh, they'll have poles and then they'll have netting there. Okay. When I say netting, that's not a fence. So let's just say someone's going through the rotation or their spin. If that discus flips out of their hand behind them and the, and the sector's out in front, if it hits that netting and you're standing right to next to that netting, guess what? that discus is not going to stop right away. It's going to push out. So uh, I know when you're going through the rounds, um, because we've, we've actually, uh, at the uh, Army trials, we actually uh, did the standing throws uh, for discus and shot. But after a couple rounds, the athletes tend to get a little bit closer. You know, they're, they're highly motivated. 
and they start getting close when they're on deck to that net. Okay, so uh, we always emphasize stay way behind uh, the net, kind of like baseball. You stay, you're on deck, stay at least 20 feet away, head on a swivel, but do not stand, whatever you do, do not stand next to that net. Uh, especially me when I was running that event, um, I tend to, you know, go over towards the net and realize, okay, I'm too close because, again, if that uh, discus launches out, it's no longer a discus. The same thing in the shot put. It's a flying projectile. And we stress this because we have seen the worst of injuries in our years of running track and field. And, it's, again, it's not necessarily on the track. It, it's on the uh, field. And, again, some people at track meets, it's like a three-ring circus. you got track going on. you got field going on especially if the field events are going on on the inside of the field, okay, uh, you really, really have to pay attention. Most of the time, uh, just so you know, logistic-wise, if they do have field events going on on the inside of the field during the track meet, they're going to have a warm-up zone away from the track, and then they'll call you over, especially at the bigger meets like at the uh, Invictus Games and so forth. So just be aware of that. Um, safety priority number one. So if you haven't ran track, we definitely want to lay that uh, that foundation down as far as, uh, you know, safety. Because a lot of people think, okay, I'm just going to run. I'm just going to throw. But uh, there's, there's, there's times when, uh, you know, you can get hurt. Coach, um, just on that note, um, just going yes, around the room now that folks are kind of logged in, uh, RSMs, just folks on, can, can you uh, click on and let us know um, what track and field events you are currently training for, are interested in training for? Just to get an idea, Greg, why don't we start with you, buddy? Um, I'm currently training for uh, seated shot put and seated discus. Um, I've been um, trying to train for uh, wheelchair racing, and I actually got a wheelchair from a previous athlete, but um, I'm a bigger stature, taller. I got it from uh, an old uh, Warrior Game athlete, Michael McFall. Um, oh, but, yeah. Yeah, but the chair I got from I'm too big for that chair, so I'd like to donate that chair to somebody that it can fit um, so I can try to get another chair. Uh, that I can fit in. Awesome. Remind me about that. We'll try to help facilitate that. Thank you, okay. Greg. Uh, Pos Posi Poseidon Athletics. Uh, I, that's your real name, right? Uh, how about you? <laughs> I'm not sure who that is. Hey. Yeah. Hey, guys. How are you doing? Yeah. Well, my name is Nelson. For some reason, it shows like uh, my actual email. It's like my <laughs> name in there. Hey, Nelson. <laughs> hey. Hi, guys. Uh, so I did this my first time for the trials in. Um, uh, I'm not really sure what I will be doing, but I was mainly training in general athletics as far as uh, track and field uh, with a standing disc uh, and, and running. Okay. Nelson, where are you located? Uh, and yeah, what branch? I'm currently in San Diego, and I retired from the Navy. Okay. Ah, oh, veteran. Awesome. Yay. Welcome to the club. Awesome. Thank you, Nelson. How about Robert Coleman? How's it? How's it there in Hawaii? What time is it there, Coleman? <laughs> it's early. <laughs> it's early. It what is event now uh, 725. <laughs> All right. Uh, which track and field events are you uh, doing, Big Coleman? <laughs> uh, I, I think I'm doing the seated uh, discus and shot put. Good. That's a strong, strong guy there, coaches. He's a big horse. <laughs> All right. Have you thrown uh, the implements before? High school, I college? Uh, okay. Not, no, not no, not uh, as far as uh, competitively in college or um, outside of that. But I okay. do have a four kilogram shot put here that I practice with during the course. Good to go. Okay. Great. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you, Robert. Good to see you this morning, brother. Who is Amber Smith? How about you? Um, no field events. I was thinking more along the 100, the 200, the 400, um, maybe the 800. I've never done actual like track specific, you know, in like high school or anything, but I do triathlon. Like I okay. do run a lot. So. Okay. I was awesome. thinking maybe those things would uh, fit better for me. Great. Well, definitely the material from day uh, two and day three that we'll be we're recording, Amber, uh, definitely when we have those up, uh, take a look at them. And if there's something that you're really interested in, you know, let us know and we can help kind of get you moving in the right direction. It's great to have you. 
And how about Eric Newhour here at Fort Belvoir? How about you, buddy? Just getting an idea of what's uh, what's actually going on. <laughs> I don't know that I'm doing any events, but just okay. trying to get a feel of what's out. Great. Okay, so we're recruiting a new track and field athlete here. So we're Great. by the end of this week, uh, but just don't take him away from my rowing team. That's all I ask. But <laughs> no, it'd be great hey, cross hey, training Patrick. for. Him. Patrick, this is yes. Roger. Um, I just wanted to say Daryl had a uh, message in chat, and he says oh, okay. he's going to do the fifteen hundred, the eight hundred, and maybe the four hundred, but not field. And, oh. Uh, much shorter than his normal marathon or 10K training. Okay, so Captain Schaefer, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Roger. Roger is watching our chat. We multi-parts here. Great. So it sounds like we have a good variety, coaches, of uh, different, uh, some athletes who are currently doing track and field and some who are interested in doing track and field. So um, I think that's great. So great. All right, we'll keep moving on. We've got about a half hour. Okay. All right, so we're going to move on to kind of like along the lines of uh, safety brief, because uh, depending on the location, there's some places where the weather can play a big factor uh, as far as like when we were at the Warrior Games last year at, in Tampa Bay, that was probably the worst uh, heat and humidity I've ever uh, experienced uh, and by far the most. A lot of athletes and even coaches were passing out due to that, but uh, when we do train, we always take into account uh, the weather conditions or just like in the military, if it's extremely hot, then it, it's considered a black flag day. In fact, uh, we've had several uh, train up camps um, at Fort Belvoir and it, it became just that hot and humid. In fact, they, and they just shut it down, said black flag. But I'm going to talk about uh, pain versus discomfort. OK, we as coaches, we want you to push uh, yourselves always giving 200% in the workouts, but safety, again, being priority number one. Um, I know that there's that saying, pain is weakness leaving the body. Uh, that's all good and stuff, but you do need to know the difference between, between pain and discomfort, okay? If you're starting to feel pain from a previous injury or something even new, that's your body saying, I need to shut it down or take a little break, okay? If you feel discomfort, okay, I'm getting you know, shorter wind a little bit here, or, you know, muscles are starting to tighten up, you know, uh, lactic acid is starting to sit in, the lactic acid dump, as we call it, or the muscle fuzz. Uh, we'll, we build through that. We train through that, okay? So, um, you know, don't be afraid to uh, talk to us. Uh, you know, I'm just going to kind of segue into my next point, drill sergeant versus coach, but always know the difference between pain and discomfort. Also, when you're training on your own, uh, just because you may have done an X amount of weight or X amount of reps on the track of doing a sprint or a hill, uh, we all have those days where things are just not going to fire up. Whether you train in the morning, if I train in the morning, I'm, I'm one of those people, things just don't seem to fire up as quick versus like midday or afternoon. Okay. Don't get down on yourself. It's just one of those days. It could be mental stress. It could be, hey, uh, you didn't get enough rest the day before. Or you're coming back from a tough workout, uh, you know, the day before or two days before, whatever. Uh, so just allow yourself to have those days. But if you start feeling any kind of pain, again, you need to shut it down or back off the intensity. Uh, always keep that um, real simple formula fit. Frequency, intensity, time, and type. If you go high in terms of intensity, okay, you're probably going to have to drop down the time or the duration of your workout. Okay, that's just common sense. If, you're going to go on the track, we'll say, for instance, and you're going to do uh, quality 300-meter repeats for sprint endurance. Uh, those are tough workouts, even if you're doing them as a wheelchair racer. I've seen Solomon Doe's another great wheelchair uh, racer coach. Uh, we have the same coaching philosophy along with Coach Gill. Um, we say, okay, you know what? It's going to be a short workout because I'm going to, I'm going to push them. Okay? You cannot take uh, any level – uh, athlete, high school, uh, collegiate, or pro. If you're going to go high intensity, you're going to have to shorten up that time. Keep that in mind when you are training on your own. Because right now we're all doing that. I mean, we're 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 going through some unforeseen. You know, I mean, we just don't know what's going to happen here, and we're we're doing what we can. Uh, I have two kids that compete collegiately, uh, one at Cal, another one at Nevada, and they were so disappointed. Training started in August. 
you know, because they have indoor track season and outdoor track season. And then they got shut down the whole season. All NCA shut it down. Um, uh, and that was it. So, you know, one thing I'll talk about later on, and Coach Gill will talk about, you got to stay ready in case you don't have to get ready. Because right now, we don't know if the Warrior games are going to happen. Okay, we do know that the Invictus games are not going to happen. But we want you to train safely. Okay, uh, keep in mind, like I just mentioned, uh, whether it's weights or running, uh, if you're going to go high intensity, you need to shorten up the time you're out on that track or in the gym. Okay, but either way, whether you're doing cardio, uh, again, strength, um, just, you know, stay on it because you want to train as if you're going to be uh, representing your branch uh, at the Warrior Games or Team USA at the Invictus Games or yourself at the Valor Games. Okay, so know the difference, again, between pain and discomfort. The other thing we'd like to talk about uh, like I, I mentioned, uh, drill sergeant versus coach. Okay, we all know uh, you guys are in the military. You're hardwired to not talk about pain. Push through it. You know, if I mention pain, then everyone's going to look at me as a weak athlete. Trust me, not uh, when we're training our athletes. We really, really talk about our uh, our team. And, you know, because that that cheesy tagline is so true. Uh, teamwork makes the uh, the dream work. Uh, when uh, you come out uh, to a regional competition or trials or the games, you're going to have uh, athletic trainers out there. You're going to have doctors. Uh, you're going to have a whole lot of people, massage therapists, a whole lot of people to help you, you know, uh, train safely. And, and that way you can perform, you know, to your maximum uh, potential. So, um, but again, we're not your drill sergeant. Talk to us. You know, we're your coach and we can't read minds. If you're feeling like, okay, I'm getting dizzy to the point where I feel like I'm going to pass out, you need to shut it down. Okay. Uh, don't be afraid to talk to any of your coaches um, um, when you're doing uh, sports. Because when you do go um, through the, uh, we'll just say the, uh, the different regionals, trials, and war games, and we'll touch on that next. Um, I found that. Um, a you know, music you need to be interlude there. there. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe that's that's my that's my hint to pa- throw it to Coach Gill. Yeah, so <laughs> Coach Gill, that's a little music. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't mean for that uh, musical segue. Sorry about that, everyone. Uh, real quick, uh, Coach Carson made a good point. Um, where this program is not only to get you prepared for a competitive event, but what we'd like to do is instill to you that this is a new way of life. <laughs> Uh, as you're transitioning uh, from your military careers, um, the exercises and the drills that we're showing you to prepare you for competition, after you get done competing, you should probably still continue to do those drills so that this allows you to to get into your 60s and 70s and 80s and and you still have a vertical life. Uh, I know that some of you uh, may have some mobility issues. You may be in a wheelchair now. Um, but I work for an airline and I can tell you that when I'm watching people who are pre-board who are literally 15 years my junior and they're in a wheelchair, that's simply because they did not take care of their lives earlier on. Coach Carson and I are going to show you some, some drills and some exercises, whether it be dynamic warm-ups, whether it be stretching, whether it be some other thing to condition your body for competition, you can be able to do those later on and throughout your life just as a new lifestyle. Uh, Coach Carson talked about pain versus discomfort. Pain equals injury, and that results in a pause in your training. Discomfort equals what we call super compensation and recovery. So basically what super compensation is, is you're gonna work hard, you have a hard workout on Monday. And then you're going to have a tapered, easier workout Tuesday, Wednesday. But what happens is while your body is recovering and coming up, it's getting stronger just a little bit. Um, The best way to know about super compensation is is like when you go to the weight room and let's say you're doing uh, uh, an arm workout or a leg workout and that body part is sore. But while that body part is recovering, it's going through what you call super compensation. And it's actually healing itself and you're getting stronger so that when you go back to your training environment, you could handle just as much, if not more weight. 
So that's the difference between pain will pause and um, uh, discomfort will create an opportunity for you to be successful. And I will tell you this, Coach Carson and I, from junior high into college ranks, there are, literally are some days when it's not your day. It's not your day to train. You think you're going to get out there, you feel good, and all of a sudden you start warming up and your body tells you, you know what, I can't go 100%. I don't feel good. There's different things that's happening in your life. You've got family, work, uh, life, whatever your career is doing for you, uh, different stressors. And so your body is going through this entire tidal wave of, you know, stress, stressors throughout the day. And you just may not be in it uh, for that day. And that's okay. You have to know that. That's okay. When Coach Carson mentioned about, you know, dial it back, pull it back, and we'll recoup in your training schedules a little bit later in the week when you feel a bit better. This is not one of those hard charging, I need to push through this. That was in your military career. That was the mission. Now that you're an athlete, your new mission is I'm starting on a, in a certain day, in a certain month, and during a specific time period, I want to see specific improvement. I don't want to see injury. I don't want to see digression. The mission is a continual improvement. And so there's times when you literally have to step back in order to go forward. Very good point. So coaches, um, we are, um, what we're going to do is, and is I'm going to just go point out to all the um, athletes that uh, you're, you're hearing the coaches refer to a lot of the training drills and examples. Those are going to be found on your day two and day three, which they'll all be on, on pre-recorded videos and with voiceovers. So you'll see a lot of the things that we were focusing today on really just having the live talking time with the coaches, get just picking their brains and getting the basics. Um, I'll, um, what we'll do uh, now, we're going to just maybe spend about five minutes and discussing a little bit about about the games and what I'd like to do is just maybe um, go over some of the questions on the quiz. There will be, will be a quiz that you guys can take. You don't have to take it. It'll help you memorize, help you learn some of the stuff, but it's a lot of the key points that the coaches want you to cover. And so we will uh, kind of go into that a little bit now and take about 10 more minutes and maybe have some questions for the last five. Okay. All right. We'll start off with track and uh, coach Gill will assist me on this. Um, I'm not sure if you could, uh, post that up, uh, Coach Patrick. Um, I'm going to go through the questions one through ten. Okay. I'm going to pull right. it up here. So the first question on the track quiz will be, what are the two main components of speed? Uh, we'll briefly talk about that. Um, I'm not going to demonstrate that, but uh, the two main components for speed are stride length and stride frequency, okay? Obviously, stride length is how long your gait is or your stride is without overstriding, because when you overstride, that causes a braking motion. You want everything to be nice and fluid uh, from head to toe, arms working uh, with the legs. Um, obviously, you need stride length to cover real estate, cover ground, okay? Uh, the other thing is stride frequency. Uh, that's basically the cycling action of your legs, picking them up and putting them down quickly um, on the track. Uh, between the two, and I believe that's going to be a question later on, I might as well touch on it now. Between the two, I believe the, I personally believe stride frequency is most important uh, because that means you're on the ground, you're not in the air. Stride length is basically you're up in the air. Uh, stride frequency means your foot is on the ground and you're applying that ground force application to push off the ground. Uh, so know the difference again, uh, the difference between stride uh, length and stride uh, frequency there. So I'm going to move on to these uh, next uh, time we meet. We'll actually be able to show you um, the difference between the two. Uh, number two here, true or false, uh, one can compete at the Department of Defense Warrior Games if they do not compete at a uh, trials competition. Um, we'll talk about that road to warrior games beyond injury. Um, basically answer that question. It might be a little different from different branches and, and coach Johnson, feel free to jump in. I know when I was the head track coach and Gil was my assistant track coach with team army, uh, for seven years, uh, you had to compete at a trials competition, uh, in order to be picked to compete 
uh, represent Team Army. Um, uh, because after uh, prior to the trials, you actually had regionals. They had the Atlantic Regional at Fort Benning, and then we had the uh, Pacific Regional. The last one uh, was at, um, I believe that was uh, Schofield Barracks in Hawaii. Schofield, yes. Yeah. Uh, prior to that, I think they had a combination added at uh, Fort Hood and Fort Bliss. Yes. No, Fort Bliss was a trial. So. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Navy, do they have a trials where you have to compete in that before going? And coach, um, coach, um, just right now for this year, if the games happen, what is the lateral that's happened is each service is adjusting their trials and their selection okay. procedure based on their. Um, I know Navy had an application process. Uh, Army, um, we have like uh, the athletes are in touch with the coaches and we're giving evaluations. And so some some people will. Uh, would be able to possibly make the team even if they weren't out of trials because a lot of the trials are virtual and it is very much um, branch specific for this year. So it's a okay. whole new world. That's, <laughs> that's good information exactly the here and now because we're we're coming close to uh, September and there might not be a trial. So what kind of guys give that, uh, uh, a, you know, give me there. Okay, moving on to number three, question three, what is the purpose and function of uh, dynamic warm-up phase? A, injury prevention, B, mentally and physically prepare for uh, workout or competition, C, warm up the body core temperature for maximum performance. Uh, everyone should pretty much know that as an athlete. That's all of the above D, okay? Uh, I've talked about this before. We talk about it at all of uh, our train-up camps, trials, competition. Always remind the athletes, simple uh, analogy is you have to um, – kind of act as if your your uh, muscles are rubber bands. If you were to get a big rubber band and put it in a cup of ice water and stretch it, it's only going to go so far, and then it's going to start cracking and it's going to snap. That's your muscles when you don't warm up. But if you get that same type of rubber band, a wide rubber band, we'll say, and, you know, warm it up, okay, uh, you're going to see that rubber band is going to stretch, contract, and load a lot easier. Uh, so it's all about injury prevention and uh, maximum performance when you uh, warm up. So... Dynamic warm-up, the uh, answer to that is all the above. Uh, some of the drills when you do dynamic warm-up, by the way, will actually be very close or mimic uh, the drills you're going to do uh, when you actually uh, go into competition. Obviously, uh, depending on your um, competition, your dynamic warm-up will be more specific. Uh, dynamic warm-up for uh, track athletes is different versus field athletes. Dynamic warm-up for some of the fighters I train at UFC gym uh, is different. Uh, so just keep that in mind. And coach, um, so everyone knows you're going to see a demonstration from uh, Coach Carson's uh, daughter, Brooke, who is a NCAA athlete on day two. Uh, so if you watch that re pre recorded session, we recorded that yesterday and he will and that she's going to go through all the dynamic warm ups and they'll be explained thoroughly. And I recommend you using those for every sport. They're wonderful. I'm stealing that and I'm using it with my rower starting <laughs> next week. <laughs> Good to go. Glad to hear that. Um, Next one, what is the purpose and function of the cool down stretch? Okay, so basically after a workout um, or even when you're competing, uh, let's say you're competing uh, in several events and you have maybe an hour between events, it's always important to do a cool down stretch. Uh, the purpose of that, first and foremost, is injury prevention. Okay, uh, once you compete, especially in, in track, if you've competed in a sprint event, you're going to have a lot of lactic acid in your muscles or muscle fuzz. So you want to, you typically a cool down can be just an easy jog around the uh, warm up uh, uh, track uh, area um, or any space that's open and then do a more like a static stretch where you're going to hold the stretch 10 uh, to 15 seconds from head to toe. Uh, after that, make sure you hydrate up uh, and then you'll be good to go uh, either for your next event or the next day. Trust me, that little, you know, you doing that little cool down stretch will make a huge difference the next day. I don't care what kind of athlete um, or what sport. Uh, cool down stretch is very, very important. And we really stress that uh, besides pre competition warm up, dynamic warm up before each event, um, because especially track athletes, more than likely, are going to be doing several events. But it's like, okay, you're done with this event. Go ahead and uh, rejoice. You won a medal, regroup and then rest. 
And then part of that rest before rest is cool down stretch. Hey, Coach, why don't we do one more question, number five, then we're going to do okay. a little bit of Q&A for the last five minutes. Okay, good to go. Uh, five, place and correct uh, in the correct order. Okay, this is primarily for sprinters. Okay, uh, I have the uh, different ones, A, finish line phase, B, maintenance phase, uh, C, gun reaction time phase, uh, D, drive and transition phase, and then E, top end phase. Okay, this is also important. Uh, Greg, you're, you said you're going to be doing uh, wheelchair racing? Yes, coach. Okay. And um, by the way, McFall is a great person. I've worked with him before, uh, along with Coach Hall Mendoza. Uh, just be like a sponge around him. Uh, uh, we're, we're, I, yeah. I've, I've known him since 2014 because I was in the was Chicago in, since um, uh, Quantico, Quantico, Chicago, and um, right. West Point. I was in the Warrior game. So. Oh, okay, uh, so you you've been through it. Outstanding. Good to hear. Good to hear. Okay, so uh, the answer for uh, number five, placed in the correct order. The first one is gun reaction time phase, and Gil, feel free to jump in here as well. That's very important. Uh, swimming, wheelchair racing. Uh, even distance runners, um, that's basically when the gun goes off. You do not want to be the last one left on that start line, okay? Uh, you've lost time. You're racing against time and your competitors. And when you put yourself in the hole, a lot of times you're going to be pressing. And when you press, meaning trying to catch up with the field, you end up injuring yourself, especially in the sprints. If it's 100 meters, uh, there's not any time to make any mistakes on any of these phases. Uh, that I'm going to touch on. So gun reaction time is really important. Basically, what we're doing is we're tuning out everything outside uh, of us to the right, left on the field. Most starters at events that do have a gun start uh, are pretty good about telling the, uh, the spectators or the audience, say, hey, quiet, guns up, next race is getting ready to happen. So the crowd will quiet down um, so uh, the uh, people competing can hear that gun. So you know, getting off to a good start is very important in any race. Uh, the next one is drive and transition phase. Again, I'm talking mainly about sprints, 100, 200, 400 meters. Um, that has to do with coming out of the blocks, block clearance, staying in that drive phase, staying low. You don't want to just pop up, okay? You want to stay in that drive phase. Uh, keep your eyes down because where the eyes go, the body will go, okay? Transition phase, that's basically where you're going to start coming more into a standing position, vertical, okay? Because uh, when you're coming out of the block, that's horizontal. When you're transitioning, that's more vertical. Uh, but that drive phase is very important. I want you to look at the, uh, the different phases as like uh, old, uh, you know, stick shift, five speed. Uh, if you go from first gear to third gear, you're gonna bog down, okay? So very, very important to stay in these uh, different phases. Uh, three, uh, again, I'm, I'm, I'm um, explaining these in the order uh, they should be in is um, top end speed. So once you uh, are past the block clearance, uh, the drive and transition phase, you're gonna pretty much hit your top end speed, uh, usually about, uh, about 60, 70 meters, we'll say, okay? That's where you're going the fastest. Because after that, because of lactic acid, even at 100 meters, you're actually gonna start decelerating. And usually the one who stays the most relaxed decelerates the least is the one that's going to win. I know some races it looks like, oh my God, the last 20 meters look like they popped it into a fifth gear. No, it's the person that stayed relaxed, you know, God given speed as well. Um, the one that's going to win the race. So a perfect example of that. If you look up um, uh, Carl Lewis, some old YouTube uh, films, of Carl Lewis running 100 meters, he had, it looked like that extra gear, but he was just so relaxed towards the end of the race. Okay, the uh, next one, fourth maintenance phase. So once you uh, obtain that top end speed uh, phase, uh, maintenance phase, that's remaining nice and loose. Okay, you don't want to start gritting down on your teeth because if you start clenching your jaws, uh, you're, uh, you know, you're going to start getting tight, okay, uh, in your jaws, your hands, and the lactic acid is going to start setting in a lot faster. So you want to stay nice and relaxed. Whether you're a runner, or sprinter that runs with your arms open, okay, uh, or your hands open, I should say, or your hands like so, okay, just stay nice and relaxed. Um, and then the last one is finish line phase. That's as you're approaching the finish line. Um, if it's a 100-meter race, whatever, you have to run through the finish line, 
okay? Just because it's 100 meters doesn't mean, okay, I'm going to hit brakes at 101. No, run through the finish line. Because in close races, you might have to time an actual lean across that line. Even in wheelchair, a lot of wheelchair races are very close at the end. If they're a short distance, you can rest assured they're going to have the, you know, the Accu uh, split timing uh, to capture the photos. So basically that's the order and the sprints. We'll go more into detail when we go over the video and stuff. Um, but that's basically the order of uh, sprint racing. Wonderful, Coach. So everybody, um, that's, that quiz we will also have in writing. There is also a quiz for the uh, field events, which Coach Wheeler is going to cover in the uh, recorded uh, section that you were going to have for day three. So you'll have all the explanation of the quiz going through the questions, but also you can print out a copy of that. And if you need it, I can email it to you. So um, really just uh, for our last uh, four or five minutes here, if there's any questions around the room that we uh, you want to ask the coaches while we're on our live part here, just uh, jump in and we'll obviously probably talk over each other, but we'll we'll try to stay in some kind of order. OK, um, so any starting with uh, Amber, did you have a OK, I see a hand up. Uh, Greg, you have a question. Greg. Amber's like, no, nope, I'm good. Yeah, um, I know uh, over on the quiz when you're talking about everything, you were mainly talking about the stride and everything for running when that translates over into wheelchair. Um, the stride and frequency, that's all in, in the push and how far you reach back and how far you're going forward um, in the push, correct? Exactly. Good, good question. Uh, I'm not uh, necessarily a wheelchair racer um, coach, but I've been around it and been around some great coaches like I mentioned, Solomon Doza and even McFall. So, yeah, uh, basically in sprinting towards the end, when that lactic acid sets in, you don't want to open the arms up. Uh, some coaches call that pulling the rope. I'm going to show you how this equates with wheelchair racing. You want to keep those arms nice and relaxed, act as if you have some drums right here, and you're running like this, short arm movement, because okay? your arms are levers. If you start opening up the arms, that's going to slow your leg pattern down. So arms and legs work together. Now, wheelchair racing, hey, it's coming down. Even I don't care if it's a, it's a 1,500 meters grueling in the wheelchair race, because it's basically four times around the track. And like we talk about even distance runners, if it's a close race, guess what? You are now a sprint wheelchair racer. It's different mm -hmm. mechanics. Okay, when you run slow, for instance, it's arms low, stay nice and relaxed. When you run fast, pop, 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 quick arm action. Okay, when you're coming uh, down to the race, it will say in the wheelchair, hey, you're leaning forward. The arm stroke is short and quick. Boom, 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 boom. We'll say what? Um, going counterclockwise, we'll say like, maybe from 12 to like nine o'clock or even pushing through to like almost all the way down to six, but it's quick. Okay. Almost like when you're, when you're starting, uh, it's gotta be pop, 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 pop real quick. So again, remember that uh, we always tell, mention that, Hey, even though you're a middle distance runner, distance runner, we've seen the races. Uh, they're usually uh, strategic where everyone just kind of sticks together and they're, they're sprinting at the end. That's in the wheelchair racing. That's even in the, you know, able body uh, classification. Everyone just kind of sticks together. And then all of a sudden that last, maybe we'll say 300 meters, boom. Good, good question. Thank you, Greg. Any other questions there? Um, Rodney, uh, you're, on, you're on deck. Coach Gill, you're talking about? Or are you talking about uh, um, any, <laughs> uh, so I saw Rodney signing up. Any, okay, Amber, let me know that she's good to go. Uh, all right. So, um, guys, if you have any other questions that you think about, don't hesitate to email them to me. And the good thing about this team's platform is you can go in there and you can you can stick stuff in the chat and I will send you the information for uh, the link to this, which will be on Warrior Care web uh, site. It'll be under the um, the uh, track and field clinic. And this is day one of the track and field clinic, which is our coaches chat getting just kind of getting to know our coaches and kind of getting a little interaction and a lot of what they talked about today and even a lot more that you haven't just scratching the surface a lot of the technical stuff will be demonstrating on the day two and day three because we wanted to create that where you can you can you can go to it and watch it and refer to it later there's some great warm-up and and exercise alternatives for those of you who are like trapped inside Coach Rodney and his daughter did their training yesterday inside in a small room to show you. It's like, look, this is what we can do. We can't get out to the track, so we're not going to say, oh, I can't do it. And they demonstrated everything in a small space. So it's really good 
uh, motivational stuff for us to know. Let's let's take that and let's roll with that and keep our motivation going. So um, once again, Coach Gill and Coach Rodney, thank you so much. It is an honor to be working with you guys. I look forward to meeting you um, more and us working together and all the um, athletes and everyone who's on as there's 12 folks on. Um, thank you for joining day one. This once again, this is the Military Adaptive Sports Program. That's MASS for short. Our um, clinic for track and field and that's day one we got it covered um we're gonna we're gonna stay on here for a minute after we stop here so we'll leave the room open for about 20 minutes or so so if you guys want to talk or hang out and stuff we're all good but officially we are good to go so bye bye from math